Gloria, thank you for talking to us today. Oh, I'm so happy to do it. And, you know, your dad was a pretty amazing man. Pretty amazing man on screen, certainly, but he was amazing off screen, too. All the things oh, he did. Yes, he was. All the things so, he accomplished. And, and just so much fun to live with. Now, he grew up poor. Oh, very poor in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather, who I adored, Foxy, he was like a little snowman with little <laughs> white hair and sparkly eyes. My grandfather sold sewing machines. So you have to do that. At that time, you have to, you know, get going around the country. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, here. Oh wait, now wait, now wait. Come here, now wait. Now, you're all popped up. Can I smoke this for you? Well, you're liable to get the effects, of course. <laughs> oh, listen, see. All right, get you're out of here. my whole act, <laughs> don't you know? Come on, get in your neck. You want to know how they got to California? Yes, yeah, sure. Instead of New York? Mm hmm so dad being very mystical they were standing at a crossroads and they were all packed up and my dad said now foxy we're going two places we're either going to go to new york or we're going to california to san diego he says you see here i've got a nickel and we're going to toss it if it comes up Tails will go to New York, and if it comes up heads, we're going California. Guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> he ended up on the top of a rooftop on A Street in San Diego in a tent on top of a, a housing tenement. His father had gone to L.A. to open up a pool hall. Mm -hmm. When he came to, uh, up to L.A., he came up on a quarter on the bus and found out that his father had lost the pool hall and he really didn't know what to do. And he knew his love was acting, but it was he really felt he was a theatrical actor and that he loved the stage and he, been, he had an acting group in San Diego he'd been in part of. And then the movie started to creep in. He'd been in one film with Thomas Edison that they were doing in, in San Diego. And then he happened to kind of bust in the gates at Universal dressed as an extra and it was a very lucky break but he started obtaining great fame in two reelers when he was doing after a first character Willie Work which was a little was Chaplin-esque but it was the opposite side of it he wore very tight clothes and he was never happy with that character but he went on to being Lonesome Luke which was a young boy with a flowing tie was very naive but he still wasn't comfortable with that because he thought it was lacking something so he found the glasses, and he and Roach kind of worked with it. He had to struggle with Roach to let him wear glasses. So Roach said, well, look, you make your glasses character one comedy one week, I will make the, f the other boy the next week. And once the, if the glasses, and Harold said, well, look, Hal, if the glasses character carries this on and out surpasses the, the other boy, he said, I want to change over the glasses character. Well, within a month and a half, it had and there Harold had his character. But once that was going on in 1919, Harold had a very horrible accident, and it just absolutely stopped his entire career. Clary, did he, did he ever talk to you about the accident? Yes, he did, you know, and he, he, he talked to me saying that, you know, we're on a borderline and it's just fate he said when I had that in my hand, that I didn't turn it up, it would have blown my head off. Mm -hmm. But instead, I tipped it. So he says, and he really believed very sincerely on fate. It's a pretty good thing to believe well, in. Well, it worked you know? for him, didn't it? It worked for him. Yes, it, it did. It certainly did because... But another, now, another man, though, m might have given up at that point. He was blinded. Blind. He was. He, they yes. told him he was going to be blind, and luckily, he well, he was blind for a period of three months, and his sight in his left eye came back, and six months later, the sight in his right eye came back, and then, of course, losing his thumb and his first finger and half of his palm. Did he wear the prosthetic device? at home or, or only when he was going to appear in public? Mm -mm. No, he never he actually, never, he, he never, never wore it, and he no. never wore it when he was in public. Here, you sit down here on here. gig, sit down gig. Sit down, sweetheart. 
I didn't Put know your that baby was down here. Happen. You did. Come on. Put your baby Don't down. Don't let him sit on it. All right, here. Even, you know, going no. to a public showing of a movie or if he was going to, he was so careful and so clever about it that he taught himself how to sign autographs and everything with his left hand. His right hand was always in his, in his pocket. Now, if he really mm. knew you very well and you were really a dear friend and he'd say, Leonard, I, he'd love to see you, you know, and you're, he would extend his injured hand, his right hand, to you and grab you. Mm -hmm. And you, at that point, you would really know he was really, you were very close to him because he would never want it to make anybody feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. over the exactly. fact that he had an injured hand. Mommy. Well, come on, over this way. Mommy. Well, where is she? Uh -huh. Where's Daddy? Do you remember, I mean, because this is, this is true for, for mm -hmm. children today growing up in Hollywood, too, or anybody oh, yeah. who has a famous father. When did you have an idea that your father was famous? Mm, that's a big question. I guess when we were invited to come on the sets, mm -hmm. and I'd say about nine or ten mm -hmm. Tell me what you remember about visiting him on the set. Oh, I thought it was, you know, very glamorous, you know, and like in movie crazy. Right. And they had all the girls all dressed up, the chorus girls and things. I want to ask you one other thing. I don't yes, know if you sir. remember this or not. What? Do you remember the first time you actually went to see one of his movies? Oh, God. That, I did. I went to see a movie with the giant in it. I mm -hmm. don't know if you remember. Remember that big, yes. big giant? And I'd never been in a theater before. I must have been about four and a half, mm -hmm. five. And I screamed at the theater. <laughs> I said, don't you hurt my daddy. <laughs> He's the only person I can think of, though there may have been others, who had home movies taken in 35 millimeter sound. And you have some of that footage. And uh, it's just astonishing to see backyard home movies with your family, but shot Hollywood style, essentially. Ladies and gentlemen, to whom it may concern, this is the whole damn family. And what a happy damn family we are. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. No, wait, Gord, what are you going to say, what sweetie? I'm glad that Daddy isn't going to China. Okay, what are you going to say? <laughs> hey! hey! What are you, Where are you going? Mid? Where are you going, Daddy? I'm going to oh, Really? Goodness <laughs> sake. Dad always, you know, had a, had a studio, and he liked to keep the same crew together, and he wanted to keep the same feeling, camaraderie, and the same, you know, creativity flowing from film to film. So he would keep his crew together by paying them year-round a salary. So they were always in the studio. So there was down periods of time. Mm -hmm. So he'd call them up and say, hey guys, you got to come over and bring the cameras. We've got a birthday party going. You know, I know you haven't shot a camera in like three months, but bring the equipment and come over to either to the beach house or up to Green Acres or wherever the event was going to be and that's how it came about because nobody had you know little portable cameras or camcorders or anything like mm -hmm. that. Did he miss being in the movies when he when he got out of the movie business do you think? Uh, I think he did. It's awfully hard for actors and actresses to give up you know. You know he, he did. He was a little depressed. But then, but then he just said you know I'm going to do things that I've never done before. I'm going to get into painting and microscopes. And then he got into pictures. Photography. Yes, photography. Big time. Oh, my god. Now, there's something here I want to show off. Why don't you pick that up? Now, what year was this presented? This was presented in 1953, but it was the 1952 Oscars, mm -hmm. and it was given to him for Master Comedian and Good Citizen. Do you have a favorite Harold Lloyd movie? That's a good question, but I think I do. Mm -hmm. I've got two. Okay. Speedy. 
mm -hmm. and the freshman. Mm -hmm. And of course, I love safety last with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. Of course. Gloria? Yes. How does it feel knowing that thanks to DVD, a lot of people are going to discover Harold Lloyd for the first time? Oh, I think it's a wonderful idea because he's going to get to all different kinds of people all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it, it's going to be a happy thing. We need happiness and laughter in the world now. We need it so badly. And this little child, my baby, She's really done such a good job, you know. It's really a joy. I love her. Well, hey, they <laughs> gave me a great life, and they did wonderful things for me. I know. They and did. I love them so much that to be able to pass this on and show it is mm -hmm. the only way, and somehow, that I can thank them for what they did for me. Well, as, as a movie fan, I thank you. I think oh, a lot of people you. will thank you all. Really. <laughs> And, and it's a pleasure, and it's fun to work for him, too. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your memories with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Leonard. Being with you. Really.